Fighter jets are a crucial part of navies all around the world. They play a vital role in projecting power in the vast ocean waters and securing air superiority. They provide cover for aircraft carriers and other military ships and conduct precision strikes and attacks to neutralize maritime and terrestrial targets. In the current geopolitical climate, these jets serve as an obstacle against hostile actions and thus safeguard international waters. They were introduced first in 1944, with the German ME 262 was deployed into service in the World War II era. Today, fighter jets are the most sophisticated and powerful component of a country's navy. These battle machines are specially designed to fulfill multiple missions, including air-to-air -air combat, neutralizing ground enemies, investigation, and even some parts of electronic warfare. When the U.S. Navy revealed the F-22 Raptor, it was the most advanced piece of aircraft that had ever been built, without any competition, showing since it took its first flight in 1977. However, it wasn't until 2023 that the F-22 Raptor carried out an air-to-air -air operation where she hunted and shot down a Chinese spy balloon off the coast of South Carolina. The factor that caught the U.S. Navy by surprise was that the F-22 Raptor came out of the dogfight without a single scratch. The aircraft was so powerful that the United States government never approved of selling it to any other countries, not even its closest allies. This surely tells us how amazing of an aircraft the F-22 was. The jet boasts the list of capabilities. It's super maneuverable, and at the same time, it holds the stealth of an F-117 Nighthawk. But why does the aircraft have a golden canopy? How can thrust vectoring technology make the F-22 more stealthy? And why does the United States government have a ban on exports of the F-22 while it exports the F-35? Although the F-35 is more advanced than the F-22 in some ways, why does the United States not export the F-22 despite it being the greatest fighter jet of all time? The truth behind why the manufacturing and production of the F-22 has been put to a stop is far from what you might imagine. The F-22 has three main key areas that make it unique. Its stealth, advanced avionics, and speed and maneuverability capabilities. The F-22 is the first American fighter aircraft that can fly at supersonic speeds. In early flight tests, it sustained speeds of Mach 1.5, one and a half times more than the speed of sound. Not only that, it's the first American fighter jet that can supercruise, and that too without using its afterburner for extended periods in combat situations. Before the F-22, all fighter jets could only cruise at speeds under Mach 0.9 while carrying a normal weapon load. These fighter jets also had the ability to fly supersonic, but only after using their afterburners. As we know, the F-22 is an aircraft designed for stealth. Using the afterburner makes it less than ideal. The thing is, the afterburner plume reflects radar signals, creating a significant infrared signature. And for aircraft that are meant to be stealthy like the F-22, it's a big fat no-no. The Super Cruise technology makes this war machine fly supersonic, but without being detected by enemy radar. But how exactly did the F-22 accomplish this milestone? The incredible speed advantages of the Raptor are thanks to the two Pratt & Whitney F-119 engines that power the aircraft. Each engine has the capability to deliver 35,000 pounds of thrust power. A byproduct of this engine was later used to power the F-35 Lightning by producing force up to 43,000 pounds. Aside from the raw power, each of the F-22 Raptor's engines is equipped with a nozzle that's capable of thrust vectoring. Thrust vectoring was implemented as a solution to the vertical takeoff and landing, or VTOL, system. Thrust vectoring can help in making a vehicle more maneuverable by pushing its nose upwards or downwards. It's a part of the flight control systems and automatically works in response to the command of the jet pilots. The British Harrier was the first ever jet that used thrust vectoring. By directing the thrust of the engines downwards, the aircraft could get off the ground vertically. But the Harrier's thrust vectoring was not intended to enhance the maneuvering of the aircraft in flight. In 1990, an experimental jet fighter was specifically designed to test the thrust vectoring technology. Designed and built under a German and U.S. joint program, the X-31 was able to safely perform maneuvers that would be either impossible or deadly for any other aircraft to do. 
It was all thanks to the thrust vectoring technology and the advanced computers on board that controlled the airplane. The lessons learned from the X-31, along with programs like HARF, where a modified F-A-18 Hornet used thrust vectoring and actuated four-body strikes, that the ultimate fighter, the F-22 Raptor, was designed and produced. The F-22 Raptor can perform maneuvers like the J-Turn and Cobra with ease. These maneuvers allow the aircraft to evade homing missiles launched by enemy air defenses and fighters. However, it's unlikely for the F-22 pilot to find themselves in such a dangerous situation as the Raptor is so stealthy and quick that it can become invisible for enemies to detect. When it comes to stealth, the designers already have a lot of experience. Since the 1980s, Lockheed has already been holding different experiments with stealth in the F-117 Nighthawk platform. At that time, the understanding of stealth was only based on the theory that sharply angled panels could disrupt and deflect radio waves, resulting in an inaccurate signal picture for the observer at the radar station. However, stealth technology is not one technology. It's a set of different technologies combined to drastically reduce the distance at which a vehicle can be detected by enemies. It includes lowering acoustics, thermals, and some other aspects. In the late 1980s, various materials that were able to absorb radar became available to U.S. defense contractors. This meant that stealth aircraft such as the B-2 bomber and later the F-22 could have more aerodynamic curved surfaces. The first procedure in building a jet is to shape the aircraft so that no energy can reflect straight back to the source. This is the reason why there are no 90 degree angles on the F-22. Right angles send radar signals straight back to wherever they came from. The F-22 typically does not carry any weapons for the same reason as well. The F-22 typically carries weapons internally. The four wings include four hardpoints, each rated to handle 2300 kilograms of armament. Each of these hardpoints can accommodate a pylon that can carry a detachable 600-gallon external fuel tank or a launcher that can carry two air-to-air -air missiles. The weapons are not visible as they're all hidden inside the aircraft's internal weapons bay, which only opens up for a moment to launch the weapons and then closes back up, similar to how the B-2 stealth bomber drops bombs. The two inboard hardpoints are for external fuel tanks. The two outboard hardpoints are dedicated to a pair of stealthy pods that house the mission systems. The aircraft's external tanks and their pylon attachments restore its low observable characteristics and kinematic performance. The canopy of an aircraft is really important in how it's treated. If left untouched, radar energy is going to find its way into the cockpit, which can reflect signals from all of the equipment inside and can send it back to the radar station. To tackle this, the cockpit of the F-22 is coated with a very thin layer of tin oxide, which gives it a golden shade. The tin oxide tint doesn't hinder the visibility of the pilot, but makes the canopy opaque to radar, and the shape of the canopy is designed to reflect the signals away from the radar. Low observable or LO coating is also a part that contributes to making the Raptor stealthy. Every night when the jet is parked in the hangars, each of the jets is inspected for about 45 minutes to look for and fix any new damage to the stealth coating. This fixing of the LO coating includes picking panels, painting, sanding, and using sealants to fill in gaps. As radar-absorbing materials require a lot of maintenance, they are limited to being applied on the airframe where they're needed the most. Unlike the B-2 stealth bomber, which required hangars with a controlled climate in order to maintain its delicate stealth properties, the F-22 could be worked on in any climate or any average hangar. Even then, approximately 50% of the maintenance performed on the F-22 is related to repairing the LO stealth coatings that are damaged when the aircraft is inspected and separated for routine maintenance. However, there's still a chance of radar signals being reflected back from the flight control surfaces. Their exposure is minimized with the help of thrust vectoring because by directing the jet exhaust, fewer flight control movements are required. This is why thrust vectoring not only makes the F-22 more maneuverable, but also makes it more stealthy. Its features make the radar cross-section of the F-22 shrink and be incredibly small in size, just like that of a steel marble. Visually, the F-22 looks stealthy, especially when you look at it head-on. The final edge that the F-22 has over almost any modern fighter jet is its avionics suite. 
only its close relative, the F-35, has newer technology as it's newer. The F-22 onboard targeting and radar system is so advanced that it gives the F-22 Raptor a first kill opportunity. This means that the aircraft will spot and shoot down its target before the target is even aware of the Raptor's presence. Combining the F-22 Raptor's first kill opportunity and stealth abilities, it's a very rare occasion where it has to use its super maneuverability to avoid being shot at. But this ability of the F-22 is not completely unused, as it can put on a great performance at air shows. That's a use for the most deadly fighting machine ever designed. After knowing about the F-22, you might wonder, why does the F-22 even exist? The US Navy's been fighting wars for a long time, but there weren't really any worthy adversaries for the F-22. The need for such a powerful aircraft came about during the 1980s, when the Soviet Union had begun ramping up its air combat capabilities with aircraft like the MiG-29 and the Su-27 and the Brev-50, with the last two being assorted into the super maneuverable class. Up until then, American fighters like the F-15 and F-16 held massive advantages over the Soviet fighters. These American jets didn't dare to be detected by the Soviet ground-based radar during dogfights, believing that they could dodge surface-to-air missiles using their flare and high-G turns. When the Soviets' technology was noticeably catching up, the effort to create a fighter that would further outdo the opponents began. By the 1990s, two potential fighters were proposed by the two military defense contractors, Northrop Grumman and Lockheed. Now, Northrop Grumman offered the YF-23. It was a large but highly sophisticated aircraft. It lacked horizontal stabilizers and a diamond-shaped body. On the other hand, Lockheed, with much of its stealth wisdom coming from the 1980s F-117 program, proposed the YF-22. It had a more traditional format. Unlike the diamond wings of the YF-23, the YF-22 had trapezoidal wings and large independent horizontal stabilizers. The YF-23 offered by Northrop Grumman was faster and stealthier, but Lockheed's YF-22 had the capacity to carry more munitions internally and was more agile for potential dogfights. So which factor tipped the United States scale in favor of Lockheed, which eventually won the contract in April of 1991? Northrop was already experiencing cost overrun issues on the B-2 bomber project, and that tipped the decision towards Lockheed. The F-22 still ended up being quite an expensive project for Lockheed. Eight months after the F-22 was announced as the new commanding air fighter of the U.S. Air Force, America's biggest rival, the Soviet Union, collapsed. Suddenly, the United States government found itself purchasing 750 state-of-the-art planes with no enemy or target on the horizon. By the passage of time and years of development and testing leading to its official introduction in 2005, the United States Air Force had decided to significantly lower the amount ordered from 750 all the way down to 195. The production of the F-22 was loosened up in 2011, and the total cost of the program was estimated to be around $67.3 billion, with $32.4 billion spent on R&D testing, and $34.9 billion on procurement and military construction. The marginal cost for an additional F-22 was estimated at about $138 million in 2009. The F-22 program also took a hit when the Navy announced its decision to pull out from purchasing any F-22 naval variants. The reason for this stoppage was simple. They were just too expensive to afford, and their cost per hour of flight time was approximately $70,000. For comparison, the estimated cost to operate an F-35 for an hour is $44,000. In October of 2018, an estimated 8 to 12 Raptors were damaged at Tiradol Air Force Base in Panama City when they took a hit from Hurricane Michael. A significant chunk of the F-22 Raptors fleet was damaged, but it's since been repaired. The United States government has also forbidden the sale of the Raptor to any foreign country due to the technological secrecy of the Raptors system 
and performance. Shortly after the development of the F-22 was completed, the United States Department of Defense announced the Joint Strike Fighter program, which would eventually end up resulting in the development of the F-35. Now, the F-35 is very similar to the F-22 visually. However, the F-35 would become a slower, less agile, less reliable type of aircraft that would not fulfill the requirements of the U.S. Navy. The F-35 was not avionically complex or stealthy compared to its sister airplane, the F-22, allowing for international export. All that aside, the F-22 Raptor's dominance is being worn out, but not because there are rival aircraft like China's J-20 and Russia's Su-57. It's the Raptor's replacement. The U.S. government and Navy have announced that the next generation of the F-22 Raptor is in its developmental phase under the Next Generation Air Dominance, or NGOD, program. The NGOD is working on a sixth generation air superiority platform, which will be specifically designed to be highly integrated with drone support, equipped with advanced weaponry, and have the most advanced avionics. It's estimated to be ready for service by the year 2030. Till then, the F-22 will remain the fastest, stealthiest, most maneuverable, and the best aircraft of all time. If you've enjoyed the video, then please make sure to give it a thumbs up and show us your support by subscribing to our video. Your support means a lot, and it keeps us going with more videos for you about the Navy. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll catch you next time.